Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hello, Wildcats. It's your boy Kev at the Brothers Commonplace. Just hanging out on Labor Day with the Charade Brigade and my haircuts a fade. Listening to episodes of How Did This Get Made? Whoa, Eminem, you thought your new album was a shit. Well, holla at your boy. They call me Mr. Spicy Boy. So anyways, this is a disclaimer. We are a comedy and crime podcast, so we do cover a lot of real, true, and serious events. However, we do like to throw in some dark humor and inappropriate jokes every now and then, so we just want to give you a heads up so you're not caught off guard whenever Tooth throws in his little dirty little Tooth stories at you. Bam! Tooth story! Bam! Tooth story! And also, I just want to let you all know to laugh at the dark stuff. Hashtag wild man. Oh, and P.S. Bill Clinton. What the hell, man? I thought that cigar thing was, uh, was a special little thing only me and you did to each other, you jerk. Now I don't feel as special. And now my feelings are hurt, and I'm out. Hashtag wild man. All right, fellas, like we practiced. Yeah. Two, three, four. Come on down. Come on down. Hanging with the brothers tonight, yeah. Come on down to the brothers' common place tonight. All righty, welcome everyone to The Brothers Commonplace, a comedy and crime podcast where we cover monsters, murders, mysteries, and, and more. more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Today we got a pretty interesting and mysterious topic, but before we jump into that, I want to introduce you all to the offensive line from the Little Giants. Oh, holy shit, you don't expect that. All right, what's up guys, this is Tim, or Demon Wind as they called me when I farted during that exorcism. <laughs> oh, dude, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> That's also a really good movie if nobody's ever seen that. Dude, real quick, I bought that movie on VHS, the only copy of Demon Wind we could find anywhere, and then we took it over to my friend's house. After that night, that VHS disappeared, Oh man! and I'm pretty sure he fucking stole it from Holy me. Holy shit. I rented it from First Stop Video, so that's how long ago oh that was. <laughs> but I'll never get it back now. No. Oh, no. yeah. Hey, everyone. It's two of your favorite little monkey, but what type of monkey am I? Am I orangutan? Am I a red ass baboon? Ooh. No, I'm a chimp pansy, as my dad likes to call me. <laughs> what up, everyone? This is Spence, or Smarmy Sailor Boy, as they <laughs> called me at the last Halloween party. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, they did. The Those Smarmy the Sailor Boy too. with a belly full of semen. Oh, shit. Cthulhu. Seaweed. AKA Rod Stewart. <laughs> Was that in like a Navy ship, too? All right, guys. It's uh, the Spooky Spaghetti Kid, (laughs) a.k.a. Big Brother Boy, (laughs) a.k.a. My Black Ass is Back. Uh. And it's your boy, Kev, a.k.a. The Dirty Dog. And thank you, Andrew, very much for letting us know who you were. (laughs) Because it's been a while. I kind of forgot. Like, when I first walked in here and just glanced over at you, at first look, I just assumed you were the limo driver for me, myself, and Irene. (laughs) 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 I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a limo I, driver. I didn't notice he was here. I actually just thought that I had really late morning wood, but now I realize why I had a boner the whole time. So. It's fucking 7 p.m. I was wondering, but now I get why I have a boner. So thanks, Andrew. So the last few episodes, they've taken us all on a wonderful journey to Germany and Austria. And this week, we are once again going to be covering the Germans. But this time, it's on our turf. Oh, shit. We have a miss. Oh, shit. Oh, damn it. We... <laughs> oh, shit, dude. We have a mystery on our hands this week. The Death Valley Germans. They were a family of four tourists that had disappeared while they were adventuring at the Death Valley National Park on July 23rd, 1996. Did you say a family of four tourists? A family of four... To- no, actually, that was uh, Impalas, I meant to say. <laughs> oh, Chevy Impalas. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so before we jump into this case, Spence, do you have a subreddit of the week to hit us with? I do. Nice. This week's subreddit is R. 
tires are the enemy. Oh, 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 oh. This sub is dedicated to the ongoing war between the human race and tires. <laughs> Wasn't that a movie? Uh, yeah. Uh, rubber? They refer yeah. to, uh, I think on their sidebar, they say, yes, we are aware of the documentary called <laughs> Rubber. <laughs> And they just have all these clips of where cars fall apart on the road and the tires oh, yes. go flying and then smack into someone. Holy and, shit, and dude. And they put, portray this like it's the tires planning their uprising. Oh, my God. This sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to subscribe. Yeah, this sounds like a fun time. Our tires are the enemy. Holy shit. Did I've seen a couple of those videos before, and I love the ones where they die, like, immediately. <laughs> oh, my God. I really thought you were just going to ask uh, if they show nudity again. Oh, uh, I mean, obviously not safe for work, but, like, there's one in a gas station where this tire comes flying at, like, 100 miles an hour and just murders this fucker immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm team tire. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, man. Nothing makes me harder than seeing that rubber going 360 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I can fucking, uh, I, I can vouch for that one, man. Dude, I tried so hard with the case being the Death Valley Germans to think of a joke that involved Alex Wright and Perry Saturn. Oh, fuck Since yes, Saturn's dude. move was the Death, Death Valley, Valley driver. driver. Absolutely. And I couldn't come up with anything. I searched so many things to find out if they ever had a match together and shit, and I don't think they did. I. Uh, but I couldn't come up with no, a good joke not. for it. Yeah. Well, apparently I did the wrong research for this podcast because I just listened to a whole bunch of Ramstein albums because <laughs> I thought it was the death metal Germans. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. So we do have a shout-out today for our boy, K-Pet. Um, his name is actually Ya Boy K-Pet, but we're going to call him Our Boy. He's ours. Oh, fuck yeah, he is. We're, we're like Adam right. Sandler, Big Daddy, and he's our little Julian. But uh, he sent us a message. He's like, hey, guys, just want to let you know I forgot to mention in my review that back in high school, I used to bang this crazy chick, mm. and halfway through, she told me that her uncle was Rob Schneider. <laughs> oh, <laughs> holy shit. And then he's like, I'm sorry for my sins. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit! I'll uh, I'll take uh, things to ruin a boner for uh, two hundred, Alex. I don't know if that would just mean like I wouldn't finish or I would finish immediately. It could go. It's a coin toss, dude. Uh, dude, I'm getting up and fucking leaving. <laughs> like, dude, I'm breaking that phone and getting a new number, man. I'm fucking done after that one. I would pull the long con where you just stay with her, so that way you get to go to the funeral and you get like <laughs> fart into his casket or something. <laughs> At least, uh, yeah, at least you'll be the only one there, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, I wonder what year this was, because if this was like 2003 or 2002, it could have been Rob Schneider himself uh method acting for the hot chick holy shit dude it could have been he could have fucked rob schneider and not known it also by the way we can't go to the funeral if we're the ones that kill him guys (laughs) we've been trying to do it for a while so Uh, unless unless of natural causes does it we probably can't go so alrighty, let's move on to our honorary brother of the week or should i say honorary grandmother of the week bow chicka bow wow nice Linda Baird, she sent us a message. She said, thank you for making an old woman laugh. I listen to you guys at work, and it makes for a better night, so thank you. For a group of young men, you do an awesome job. By the way, I'm a grandma of 25 grandkids and love the hell out of your show, so you reach all ages. Damn. Yeah, she's super nice. She's super Mm. kind. She always sends us nice words. Damn, 25. So is the couple letters GILF appropriate for this? Uh, Oh, that's what I was going for. I mean... You know, I, I sent out an email, you know, like told you guys to, to you know, holler at your boy last week. So, you know, hey, well, you check know, me out. You Andrew, know I mean? you should never gilf the lily. You know, gilf, girl I'd like to find. Like, come on. <laughs> All righty. So on to the case. Most of this information was taken from otherhand.org. And there's that's an amazing write up, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's really... super good. Did you guys read it all? I read almost all of it. It's good. Wait, otherhand.com? dot org okay uh, w- what is it do is that like when you sit on your hand and do <laughs> the, <laughs> do the stranger, stranger to yourself yeah. <laughs> i say that's i knew exactly as she said that it was gonna be the stranger or is that the options that ike turner off or tina turner <laughs> oh my god, do I like that one more? So, oh. so otherhand.org, it is actually a personal <laughs> blog for a person named Tom Mahood. 
And nice. it's such a wonderful article. It has a lot of great detective work in there as well as tons of the official uh, reports and pictures. And then there's just a ton of great shit on there. So if you are at a computer while listening to this, you should follow on there because we're going to get a lot of information from there. And there's also maps and stuff you can look at. And see pictures. Tom is our favorite boy in the Mahood. <laughs> That's shit. right. More like Tom Manhood. But already moving on. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> so here we go to Death Valley National Park. Now, this information was taken from their site because I really didn't know a whole lot about it. So I was like, all right, it sounds like a place I don't ever want to fucking go to. They describe it as the hottest, driest, and lowest national park. I, I kept wanting to crack an Undertaker joke. <laughs> this is from Death Valley. It's been like so hard not to. What you just described is usually exactly how most girls describe the area around my nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's on like the official website. So they, they don't even make it sound like a place that you want to go to. Yeah. So like they could easily spice that up a little bit. But the park, it's located near the California and Nevada border and occupies an interface zone between the Great Basin and Mojave Deserts. Mm. So why is it called Death Valley? Because it's full of death claws. Close. <laughs> uh, is it when the Mexicans jump over, they don't have a car, so they have to like walk to find a town, and they can't make it in the desert, and they die out there? So according to the website, Death Valley was given its forbidding name by a group of pioneers lost here in the winter of 1849 to 1850, even though, as far as we know, only one of the group died here. So it's like they put that in there, so yeah. it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. they all assume that this valley would be their grave. They're still not fucking making this place sound good. It's like, oh by God. the way, the cat. If you come here and there's cactus, the water, you'll drink it and get AIDS. Oh pr- they might as well just throw that part in there too. They're so over dramatic. It's like the one time I fucking dropped my fucking Kool Aid jammer, and I was like, "Fuck, this is the land of the lost souls." <laughs> what? what does that mean? So the place, if you look at pictures of Death Valley, I guess it kind of looks cool. I don't know. I really don't. I've never been there. I don't know what to really think of it. Everything about it sounds like it's a place I would never want to go. Oh, yeah. It does have a 4.7 rating on Google with over 5,000 reviews. And then I found a review by a person named Finn McKillivray. That's probably not how you say it, but there's like 40 letters in it. Nice. And this is what his review said. My friend died in this dump. Two stars. Oh, so, fuck you. Yeah. So, Dude, wait, why didn't he yeah. give it one? Like, so what was cool about it? Something was worth it to give it one, <laughs> like an extra star, even though his friend died there. Oh, Finn's friend was Poe, the best yes, pilot in the Resistance. <laughs> yes, it fuck. Wait, or it could have been the, the random fucking chick that they added in Last Jedi. Just a quick decipher. Yeah. He didn't say it was his best friend, so. It's mm. true. Uh, okay. That's that true. Would've, that would have given it the one, the one star. <laughs> So, all right, anything before we move on to the case? I already found a buffalo nickel, and that's why I gave it two. <laughs> all righty, here we go. July of 1996, a family of four Nazis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Germans. Called the Brothers Commonplace. <laughs> <laughs> Germans, I mean. They usually only call us, like, the family of four Nazis when I'm not here. And then when I show up, it's a family of four Nazis and a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> So, just, like, just like that Anne Frank porno I watched. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so a family of four German tourists, they would disappear in Death Valley. The family consisted of Egbert Rimkus. Oh, what the guys, fuck, man? Guys, Holy come on. Shit, Holy dude. shit. He was man. 34. His son, Georg or George. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, oh, my God, dude. You shouldn't have even tried, uh, all, oh, these, all these people fucking disappeared, Jeremiah. There's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> They're German tourists, okay? Yeah. So we have Egbert Rimkiss. <laughs> Dude, the fuck the thing is his son uh, disappeared from Boy Meets World, too. <laughs> Dude, wait. Egbert, is that one of the fucking enemies in Super Mario World? <laughs> <laughs> is that one of the mutt no, it's Beaker? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, so you know how, like, when you have it use a glue bottle in a while, it gets that hard piece of glue, yeah, like that's in the cap, and once that fucking piece is gone, like all the glue comes out quick. And that's yeah. how like I was with just a fart right there, dude. <laughs> that was so hard to hold it in. <laughs> so okay, guys, huh, we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try this again. A family of four German tourists would disappear in Death Valley. The family consisted of Egbert <laughs> Rimkiss. <laughs> I, heard he, I, I heard he liked to toss salads. He was 34. His son, Gay <laughs> Which Dude. is, it just happens to be my dad's favorite website. <laughs> Dude, it's almost like Agord, like, hated his name. I was like, you know what? Fuck you, son. You're getting a shitty name, too. <laughs> well, okay. It's like family tradition to pass down <laughs> shitty names. Well, his son, Georg Weber, he doesn't have uh, the Rimkiss last name. Hmm. Um, then Egbert's girlfriend, oh, Georg was 11. Uh, Egbert's girlfriend Cornelia Meyer. What the? She was twenty-eight, and then her son Max Meyer. He was four. Okay, we got one normal guy. That's before he made his big move. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this in? This was in nineteen ninety-six. Oh, so you can legally change your name around then? They still <laughs> well, fucking didn't. <laughs> well, the, he's him and his his wife aren't ma- aren't together anymore. So this is his girlfriend. It's him and his son, and then his girlfriend and his girlfriend's kid. So the son must have taken the mom's last name absolutely, or got adopted or something. I don't know. So the four, they'd completely vanished with almost no traces at the national park. But now let's fast forward to October 21st, 1996. So that was in July of 1996. Didn't they have another kid? Was his name lay on your stomach while I? (laughs) 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 While I (laughs) ran. I can't believe you guys are laughing at such a fucking low quality joke. <laughs> Those Germans got some nutty names though, man. Holy uh, shit. Now, let's fast forward to October 21st, 1996. A park ranger named Dave Brenner was <laughs> <laughs> That's not even a funny name. It's uh, a normal Brenner. name. We're just uh, laughing at a normal name. Uh Dave Brenner, he was flying over the park in a military helicopter. Nice. This was part of a routine aerial surveillance procedure in which they would fly around and look to see if there were any drug manufacturing labs going on, like hidden somewhere in the park. So that's like a super badass job. Like, I would love to tell somebody like, oh, hey, I'm a park ranger. And then they'd probably be like, oh, yeah, that's probably a little fruity, you know. <laughs> and then you say, yeah, well, I fly around in military helicopters over Death Valley looking for drug makers. And after that, you're like, that makes me a fucking power ranger, bitch. <laughs> Oh my god, you yes. Know, true story, my dad wanted to be a park ranger. Yeah. That would have been sweet, dude, with his Civil War mustache. It's pretty badass that he <laughs> did become a power ranger. Wait, <laughs> what fucking park around here would he range? Uh, uh, I don't know, there's a bunch of parks, man. Finley? Oh, I guess, yeah, that's true. Hmm. So around 11 a.m. that morning, Dave saw something unexpected and out of place. He noticed that there was a vehicle in the wash of Anvil Canyon. The place where the vehicle was didn't have any real or legal road down there. So this place is not only off limits to drive through, but it was in October of 1994 with the passage of the Desert Protection Act that made this area an official wilderness area, thus prohibiting any vehicle use. So you're not even allowed to drive anything down this way, which it would be nuts to even attempt to drive a car down here. And not to mention the vehicle that this family was fucking driving was a 1996 Plymouth Voyager. So that was a brand new vehicle. Yeah, but yeah. it's a fucking minivan. Mm. They're taking a yeah, minivan to go down, a down minivan. fucking canyons and shit. Fuck yeah, a dude. minivan. Yeah, a minivan. <laughs> okay, a side story real quick. So, <laughs> me and my buddy Mark once we were at Circle K, and uh, we see this van pull up, <laughs> and uh, this van has no doors. It just has towels and shit. No, it has curtains. Mm, yeah. It has no doors on the side, just curtains, and this guy gets out, and he's the biggest fucking hillbilly redneck guy I've ever seen in my life, and Mark, with like the windows down, just looks over at him, <laughs> and he's like, if you drive a minivan with curtains. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. <laughs> a minivan. <laughs> 
If you named your son Earnhardt. <laughs> if you named your son Egbert. <laughs> you might be a Nazi. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so in the middle of July, this family or this group, they took a a minivan and tried to drive it off road through a canyon and shit where there's valleys, rocks. So obviously they weren't going to make it too far. Hashtag Maybe. wild man. Hashtag <laughs> wild man. It would have been easier just to go there with like soaps or Heelys <laughs> on. <laughs> what if he was driving with Heelys on? That'd be awesome. Maybe they're just trying to follow uh, the footsteps of their German uncle, Evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, dude. Maybe. So Dave, he goes down to inspect the minivan. And he finds that it's covered with a layer of dust and looks like it's been out there for some time now. So and which one of our dicks was he looking at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, not mine because he didn't have the fucking telescope out. <laughs> was he? Was he looking at those all those college offers I got? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Dude, Dude, you we, didn't even apply to college, did you? No. Because I fucking, Toof was supposed to get me, he worked at a college, and he was supposed to get me a job there, and I gave him an application, <laughs> and like 10 years, not exaggerating, 10 years later, <laughs> I was in the, sitting in the back seat of his car and found that application. <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude, I never turned it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. He toofed you. This stupid fucker believed me. <laughs> And the van, it was stuck in the wash and sunk up to its axles in the sand. The rear tires are both flat, and the left front tire was also flat. And speaking of three flat tires, Toof once drove an S10 with three flat tires to school. No <laughs> fucking clue how he kept it on the road, but hell yeah. Hashtag yeah. wild man. Hashtag dude. Like wild yeah, man. Too. Fuck yeah, dude. Hashtag tires are the enemy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. shit. Yeah. It was their demise, dude. Well, well, a lot of fucking tire stuff. Wait. Going on. So the tires were flat, so they're like, the axles were on the ground. Pl- they're like si- like sunk into sand and shit, too. So the rims were kissing the <laughs> ground. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. Mm. Conspiracy <laughs> and, theory. And after some more inspection, the van appeared to have been driven at least 200 feet with the flat tires. The doors were locked, and the owner was nowhere to be found. So they took pictures of the van and noted the license plate number and filed a report. Good for them. <laughs> the report then showed that the vehicle had been reported stolen by the Los Angeles Police Department on September 10th, 1996. Hmm. The vehicle was owned by Dollar Rent-A-Car. <laughs> that just sounds <laughs> shitty. <laughs> and it was rented out by a group of German tourists in L.A. on July 8th of 1996. Uh, that makes sense. But yeah, you have to. they had to wait 30 days to report it stolen, yeah. so that's why it took so long. Yeah, that makes sense. All they knew so far was that the German group had flown out of Frankfurt and into the U.S. and into Seattle on July 8th. They then flew to L.A. and picked up the rental van. Hmm. Egbert, he either didn't have a license or he forgot it. I'm not quite sure. But Cornelia was listed as the driver at the rental place. When the uh, Rangers called Dollar Rent-A-Car to ask about it, the person who answered, they're asking about the car, and the the person at Dollar Rent-A-Car was like, they stole it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Fuck yeah. Dollar <laughs> rent a car sounds like, like, oh, go, you want to rent a car and you come in and it's like a fucking little RC car yeah. or something. It just sounds like a piece of shit. It's like the place where you're like almost out of gas. Like, fuck, dude, I, I got to get to this rent a car place. And you see that one. You're like, I'll go to the next one. Yeah. You, oh, like, shit. I actually <laughs> ran it over in all the cars, too. <laughs> With my fucking four wheeler, they rent you out like the little rascals rig with like the dog on the harness and the chicken in front of it to get it to oh my run. God. It's the place where Jim Carrey got the loner. Bring out the loner. The loner. The loner. <laughs> Dude, on the way here, I saw a billboard that had a picture of a Happy Meal on it, and it said "Good meal, good deal, three bucks." Which is like we know it's a fucking Happy Meal. We know it's a fucking good deal. But all right, moving on. <laughs> In fifth grade, we went on a field trip, and they're like, yeah, we're going to get McDonald's for lunch, so everyone bring in their order what they want a day before, and it was fifth grade. I was like, all right, cool. I'll just get a nugget Happy Meal. I was the only fucking oh, kid fuck that got yes. a Happy Meal, and everyone made fun of me. I was yes. like, what, you guys don't fucking eat Happy Meals anymore? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Whatever, guys. I was the only one that had a toy to play with that day. And he also got that toy from McDonald's, too, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I did leave out the part where I stole my dad's flashlight to take. <laughs> okay. So the van, the van, it was due back on July 26th. 
And then the German group, they had tickets to fly back to Germany on July 27th, which they would never end up getting on that flight. And there was also no evidence of them ever leaving the United States. Wow. And July 12th, Egbert, he would make a call to his bank in Dresden and request that $1,500 be wired over to the Bank of America in San Clemente. And there's not a ton of information on what happened the next group of days. However, on July 21st in Las Vegas at the Treasure Island Hotel, Egbert, he faxed a request from the hotel and over to his ex-wife hmm. requesting some money be sent to him. Oh, fuck yeah, So, dude, holy shit, ex-wife. the fucking balls on fuck this motherfucker. Yeah. Imagine, he's on vacation with his son, a new girlfriend, and her kid, and then he's faxing his ex-wife like, hey, can you send some money over, please? That's pretty badass. Hashtag wild man. Oh, yeah. This has been hashtag wild man this and, whole episode. And uh, spoiler alert, she doesn't send any money, so hashtag wild woman. <laughs> Bullshit, bitch. <laughs> and then the group, they would then check out on July 22nd and make their way to Death Valley. I didn't know his ex-wife was fucking mucklow, so <laughs> good to know that now. <laughs> but yeah, fuck that. I'm not leaving a place called Treasure Island and then heading out toward Death Valley. <laughs> it's like being like, hey, we're having a great time here in Titty Sprinkleville. <laughs> Uh, where are we going tomorrow? Oh, Sack Taser Island. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> like I was our- hoping you'd say Swamp Ass Island. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. We're going to start at uh, Treasure Island. We're going to go through Death Valley. Then we're going to take a little uh, pit stop at the time machine, and we're going to end up 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start off Treasure Island, go to Death Valley. Oh, cool. What happens next? You know, we never made it that far, so I guess we'll figure out. Maybe it'll be some coloring or something. <laughs> Sand pits. Oh. 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 oh yes. And, hey, you did do research, Andrew. Andrew. No, he just got back from the beach and he forgot to wash underneath his armpits. <laughs> <laughs> he just yelled that out. Uh, and at the Death Valley Visitor Center, receipts show that there were two German copies of the booklet Death Valley National Monument Museum text that were sold. There was a clone of your dog? <laughs> <laughs> two German, German copies. copies okay <laughs> where was I you, uh, two German copies why you could, I had like six more words to read then you could have said that I don't know when it ends uh, alright so there are two of those German copies that were sold and there were none that were sold on the 23rd so at least they were able to narrow down that it was on the 22nd mm. and one of those booklets would be found in the van later nice and now back to the search in Anvil Canyon. So another shout out to otherhand.org because this is where like all the rest of this information comes from. As far as the discovery of the van went, there were no footprints besides Dave's that were anywhere around the van. They did manage to find some food wrappers as well as some shit and toilet paper. So that's... <laughs> Nice. Sounds like a good day. Hey, whose poop was it? <laughs> do, you ever, do you guys remember those commercials where it's about um a metal detector and it's like this big fat walrus looking dude walking around? He's like, yeah, I found this. It is a fucking wedding ring. He's like, I gave it to my wife and she's proud of the weight I lost. It's like fucking <laughs> no. You're not losing oh, any weight man. using this metal detector, dude. <laughs> so he gave his wife this fucking shit ring he found and claims he lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> no, he fucking didn't. He probably just aimed that over the jewelry box. He was like, "Look what I found, babe." <laughs> he's uh, he's just the fat uh, the fat short guy that owns the pawn shop in the crow. Look at all these <laughs> rings I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! And inside the van, there were a lot of interesting items, including an American flag labeled. It's not pronounced this, but Butt Valley Stone Cabin. Oh fuck oh, yeah! He sure wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you spell it out. <laughs> it's B U T T E. So okay. obviously it's not butt, but I'm gonna call it that. <laughs> what what else? Uh, like what would it be? Like boot, <laughs> buddy. Butte. It's butt, buddy, Butte. buddy valley. That's it's where fu- like butt buddies came from. It's fucking. Buddy <laughs> yeah, I'm valley. fucking buddy valley, but uh, <laughs> you better get out of here before I turn into the fucking professor. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> Wait, uh, if it was uh, if it's Buddy Valley, are you sure instead of the Nazis they just had Confederate flags everywhere? <laughs> Holy shit! Buddy Valley, just a cigarette aisle of anywhere. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here we go. So the so inside the van, there's an American flag labeled Butt Valley Stone Cabin. <laughs> this cabin, also known as Geologist Cabin, was located roughly four miles west of the van's location. The cabin was a comfortable shelter that had some food as well as a water source adjacent to it. 
But more importantly, with the flag here in the van, it shows that apparently the party had to have been in the cabin at some point and then taken this with them for some reason. They also had a bunch of uneaten bags of Andy caps, <laughs> cheddar frost. <laughs> what if they were planning to take that flag back to Germany and claim that was the American flag? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like they really did just steal it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It sounded like they stole it, though. Or made it up because it fucking says Butt Valley. <laughs> Or, well, yeah, probably. I'll say they could have just took it, like, to mark their location, because they were getting scared and desperate, but, like, or they could have just stayed in the cabin and not stole stuff. In my extensive <laughs> amount of research I did on the interior of the van... Yeah, he wrote the paper. They, uh, you know those little pockets that they'd have behind the front seats? <laughs> well, yeah. if you open up the... You open up either one. I don't remember which one it is. It's probably the passenger <laughs> yeah. on the left side. It wasn't that extensive then, was but it? But if you opened it up, there's a little like manila folder in there. Mm-hmm. And you open up the folder, and there's just pictures of butts. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I'd throw that. That was just secret file information. Oh, okay. Thanks, Andrew. I must have missed that page when, when I was reading. You actually had to... Research guy for once. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. oh, Jesus, man. So here's some of the other items that were found in the van. Two unopened bottles of Bud Ice. And one empty bottle. Yeah, so Luke was not there. <laughs> Those would have been gone. One empty and one three-fourths full bottle of bourbon. Several empty large water and juice containers. Luggage and clothing. Numerous exposed rolls of 35 millimeter film, uh, one new Coleman sleeping bag in its box, and an empty Coleman sleeping bag box, mm. a tent, a pipe with tobacco, a leather card carrier containing Swiss bank cards that belong to Egbert, a card from the Seahorse Resort in San Clemente, and then a bunch of toys, and then like an unused spare tire and jack. Hmm. Holy Ooh. shit, dude. That sounds exactly like what I've had under my bed as a fucking six-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the jack was used, if you know what I mean. Hell yeah, it was. Yeah. So who's that guy they found in the car? Who's Jack? <laughs> I hate you, too. <laughs> if he's German, he probably has a name like Hasselhoff or Mehoff, right? <laughs> so, like, I know this is, like, their first time in the United States and stuff, but... They could have done better than Bud Ice. I mean, not saying it's a bad beer, but yeah. I don't want to go through the fucking desert drinking Bud Ice. Yeah, it would be my <laughs> it would be my beer of choice now. now. If you're going through Death Valley, it's your only choice. <laughs> Investigators were now checking out the log books, hoping they could find a clue somewhere, and that's when they came across a log on July 23rd. The visitor log book for the Warm Spring Mine Site, located on the route between the Main Valley and Butt Valley, <laughs> it states in German, we're going over the pass, and it was signed by Connie, Egbert, Georg, and Max. The pass mentioned would have had to have been referring to Mangle Pass, which is just a few miles from Anvil Canyon where the van was found. <laughs> so It's they- like extremely dangerous to, to do this. And they're like, we're going over the pass, baby. Yo, fuck yeah, guys. <laughs> Maybe they thought they were going to find Dr. Mengele. <laughs> <laughs> the very evil uh, Nazi mad scientist guy who experimented on prisoners. Oh, oh, oh shit. That I goes actually well with remember reading their like manifesto before they left. Mm. And at the very, very end, it just said, we're going over the pass <laughs> as... Mad Max, <laughs> <laughs> ass to ass, and then also they they were they signed the logbook. We're just celebrating. We got the unlimited pasta pass, to Olive Garden, and <laughs> is that real? That's why we got the three butt ices. Uh, no, that's not true. Yeah. So they were in up, they were in Butt Valley. Yes, and they found a log. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Jesus Christ! So. Dude. At this point, the only listeners we have this episode are probably like eight-year-old kids who don't get half the stuff we say, but we (laughs) mention butt and poop enough to where they're excited. They get everything I say. (laughs) Like, this tooth's a genius. (laughs) Fortnite. I got him. Then two finally gets laid. I didn't mean that, too. You've been fucking me for years. So this route that they're on, if they are going toward Mangle Pass, it's extremely rugged, 
Uh, traversable only by a four-wheel drive vehicle and a competent driver, not four German tourists in a minivan. Mm. But this is some hashtag wild man material so far. We got four Germans possibly drunk as balls and riding this minivan into dangerous territory. Granted, we don't know how the story ends yet. Maybe they're all dead. But for right now, hashtag wild man. Hashtag wild man for sure. That's the way I would go out. Mine oh, yeah. is like the butt ice. <laughs> you know, I'd rather drink the fucking semen pump from Rod Stewart's <laughs> tummy than fucking drink that shit. But I kind of like but <laughs> yeah, I actually, it's not yeah, that bad. So it wouldn't be my first choice. No. Imagine you're so desperate and how hot that can has to be that you drink it. Oh fuck, dude! Yeah. It's better than like, probably what killed him. It's better than like an old Milwaukee or something. Yeah, oh, fuck that. Like, like I'm taking that or like a Natty Daddy. Ugh. Oh yeah, that's the worst one. You find a Natty Daddy in the desert and you just start fucking chugging it, but fuck it was actually that. a mirage and it was just <laughs> Mel Hall. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you're happy about it? <laughs> it's just him laying there doing his fucking leg thing. You're like, damn, I thought this felt like a tall boy. <laughs> <laughs> and after searching the registrations and logs for the inns, hotels, ranches, and resorts, there's no record of the party staying anywhere on the night of July 22nd. We know that they left on the 22nd and were at the Death Valley Center on the 23rd, though. So they stayed somewhere that night, but not anywhere that would have had receipts or any mm. records of it. Yeah. On October 23rd, there was an investigation group consisted of members from the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group, the Indian Wells Valley Search and Rescue Group, and then eight mounted units from the Kern County Sheriff's Mounted Search and Rescue. Guess which and, one Kev was involved in? <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't really need to read those names. I just really liked them, so yeah. I wanted to read them. And Kev was involved in one of them, uh, the China one. Like, you know how whenever like cops bust in, it's like, FBI. Yeah. Imagine being the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group. And by the time you do that, all, all the hostages are fucking dead. We tried. I don't know what's I don't know what's quicker. How long it takes to say that or how long it takes to eat Chinese food before you get hungry again. Oh come on, dude. Are you kidding me? No. Damn. Oh, that's pretty good. It's it's still good though, man. Dude, me and Andrew used to eat it like every time before we went over to, to Kevin Spencer's place in Mansfield and we just fucking take dumps there. Oh yeah. That was like our favorite thing to do. It was awesome. And during their search on day one. They found a Bud Ice beer bottle that was planted in the sand at Anvil Canyon Holy about 1.7 miles east and downstream from the van's location. The guy found it. He looked down. He's like, I see the ice <laughs> in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> so this fucking, this crazy fucker, dude, <laughs> in the middle of July in the desert, walked one and a half miles drinking this Bud Ice. Dude, you're fucking convincing me this is Luke, dude. That's fucking <laughs> awesome. So here we go. Um, the beer bottle, it matched the ones in the van, and plus they're like, who the fuck else is drinking Bud Ice out here? Yeah. There was also an ass spot in the sand next to the bottle where the guy sat down. It's because he drove the fucking, like, half the fucking country in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, that's good. Oh, hell yeah. How much did you research that ass spot? <laughs> <laughs> like, was it, like, with pants on, or was it bare ass? <laughs> Because maybe he was trying to sit on the bottle, oh, and he just fuck missed. <laughs> yes, dude. I thought the Rockies would be a lot hillier than this. <laughs> so here we go. That was the first clue of the day, that uh, the, bo- <laughs> the bottle of Bud Ice and the ass spot. But it would also be the final clue of the day. Mm. On day two, October 24th, they get more search teams and decide to expand the search area as well. They even got two helicopters involved to help out in the search and so they could help dish out supplies to the search teams. But no clues were found, no bodies, no items, no butt ice bottles, nothing. (laughs) Day 3rd, October 25th, they expanded the search zone even further. More teams and more extensive area searches, but nothing. Day 4, October 26th, and also their final day searching. Search teams went everywhere they could. They're looking down walking paths, valleys, cliffs, inside mine areas, everywhere. Hmm. Unfortunately, though, besides the beer bottle on day one, nothing new was found, and the search was called off. Wow. And this is an exact quote taken from the article. This was truly a massive search performed by very competent search teams. The CLMRG people alone are some of the best in this part of the country. There were over 45 searchers in the field and two helicopters in the air at any given time and eight horses on the ground. Yeah. 
Costs for the search were approximately $80,000 in 1996 dollars. It was estimated by a DVNP spokesperson that 250 people were involved in the search at one time or another. The area's search were all reasoned and a high probability of success was expected. Unfortunately, even a high probability is not a guarantee. But ICE is still going 22 years <laughs> later, though, man. So that search team, they spent four days, $80,000, which in, that was in 1996, so I don't know what that equals to. Mm. Uh, 83000 <laughs> in today's money. <laughs> so it was no, like, we're, we're not talking about the value of Bud Ice. <laughs> <laughs> so they spent like $80,000 $80, in 1996, and all they found was an empty bottle of Bud Ice in that ass spot. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Worth it. And during the summer here, even experienced hikers with decent gear are like, yeah, it's not a fucking good idea to go out there at all. And on July 22nd and the 23rd, the days where the party disappeared, it was 123 degrees out there. Jesus Christ. The lowest it got at night was 91 degrees. And inside the van, when Cornelia was in control of the aux cord, it was 98 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. fuck yeah, uh, dude! Yes, <laughs> sorry. That was good. It's the joke we needed. <laughs> it was. It was the joke this town needs, <laughs> but not the one it deserved. Dude. That's right. So the reason we mentioned OtherHand.org and Tom Mahood was not only because that's where most of this information came from. But because this site he put together, it's his own personal site, he heard about the case and started doing his own work on it and investigating. So he's a total badass, hashtag wild man. This is something like he searched, like he found this case. He has nothing to gain from it besides wanting to solve it and like get some closure for the family. Yeah. So all this shit he just does on his own. Yeah. He doesn't go there out there that often. Yeah, when he goes out there though, he, he calls calls himself like Tom Hood, you know, like you know, he's he's normal there. But uh, if he goes anywhere cold, he calls himself Tom Hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fucking try that joke twice, dude. Uh, That's so man. stupid. And then he transforms himself into an axe, and he calls himself a Tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess uh, he Tom- just puts on a bunch of axe. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hood and his family, they used to live in like downtown New York and they had to move away because his dad, his dad really liked playing basketball, but he kept getting into fights and stuff because mm. it always seemed like to have really bad timing. Every time that he would win a game, his son, Tom, would actually show up. Little baby Tom would come running up right as he hit the game winner and he would yell out, this is Ma Hood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dude, this literally, like, when you go back to listen to this, it sounded 100% like a fresh Prince of Bel Air, like, lead up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A couple of guys were up to no good, started causing trouble with Tama Hood. (laughs) (laughs) A couple of Germans were drinking butt ice. (laughs) 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 So, uh, Tom Mahood, he's actually pretty funny, too. His writing is awesome. This blog is totally worth reading. I really, really highly suggest you guys check it out. And he states that in the summer of 2008, that's when he first heard of this case, hmm. he was on a Death Valley forum where he first read about it because he likes to hike and do that shit. And then he said he went back to watching porn and cat piano videos <laughs> like Wait, immediately An- after reading it. Andrew? Was it Andrew? You? Was it you? Wait, he really said that? Yeah. <laughs> What? Because it's funny. His reading's good. His writing's good, man. Uh, okay. It's hilarious. It was Andrew doing there's, all this. There's nothing wrong. I I like to try and split my valuable time between my advanced writing techniques <laughs> and my advanced jerking of <laughs> la porno. <laughs> <laughs> la and he said the Death Valley Germans case was always in the back of his head. And a year or so later, he was part of a rescue training team. And he was learning as much shit as he could since he's already always going hiking and stuff. He's like, well, I might as well learn some of this stuff to help out. And as he was asking about the Death Valley case, people told him to reach out to a woman named Debbie Breitenstein, Breitenstein, Mm. because she was obsessed with this case. And also, she was a member of the original search team and had a bunch of official documents and pictures from it. Hey, it's Breitenstein. It's Franken... Steen. Good movie. Tom, he said one thing that intrigued him after talking to Debbie and getting all those documents was that there wasn't really anything new. 
all the basic information that was already out there was really all there was. And this made him want to go after the mystery even more because something was missing and didn't add up to him. He did manage to track down two of the private investigators that worked on the case, and he ended up finding out two pieces of new information. The first being that a man on an ATV about 3.5 miles southeast of the van's location claimed to have found some German canteens. Hmm. And the second clue was that during that three-month gap between the Germans disappearing and the van being found, there was a sleeping bag that was found 18 miles south of the van's location. And the van did have an unaccounted sleeping bag that was missing. But whether or not any of this was connected, he couldn't really follow up on those because it happened almost 15 years ago and he had no way to access those items. Like, how do you know the canteens were German? Uh, writing on them and stuff, uh, I think. Oh, okay, gotcha. That but the sense. guy who said he found them, because um, it was so long ago, I don't think he had them anymore or he yeah. had no way of proving it or something. Absolutely. They were full of warm butt ice. That's how he knew Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he didn't have them because he fucking drank that shit. What about instead of uh, who Johnny Appleseed going around and planting like apple trees all around the country? Is Luke <laughs> just going around drinking butt ice all across the country and leaving <laughs> bottles? <laughs> this this is kind of uh, yeah. This this probably happens. Yeah. However, Tom couldn't just stop there. Four people had completely mini vanished with no traces, <laughs> and so he started to look at what the most common theories were so far. The first theory was that the Germans had staged the incident so that they could disappear and start new lives. Mm. Egbert's ex-wife had stated that they were having custody issues with their son, and he was on the trip with that son, so maybe he planned to to escape and start anew somewhere with them. Also, some of Egbert's co-workers had stated that Egbert had claimed that he wanted to move to Costa Rica, which was rumored to have been so that he could escape and take Mm. his son with him. I mean... Maybe, I don't know if I should save this for the theory section or not, but do you think that maybe they all just want to change their fucking names? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, let's every be single honest, guys. Um, not only do all of our names suck, but we're clearly not going to win the rat race. <laughs> Does it just sound like the group of <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah, fucking dude. group of Jews got John Lovitz? <laughs> the girl is shitting out the window. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so some people claim that they were staging all this so that they could try to start life anew, which in a way, there is a lot of unnecessary details. Like they leave messages like, oh, we're heading for the pass. And they left a money trail, the hotel, signing the logbook. Yeah. But this was the wrong place and time to plan a disappearance. Like it's such a it's such a dangerous place oh, yeah. in the summer. And on top of that, Cornelia, she had a thriving business back in Germany so it didn't really make sense for her to want to completely start over. Absolutely. So he kind of didn't really agree with that theory. Mm. And Egbert, he was said to have been very interested in military operations and technology. So this is the second theory. And he heard about a secret military facility near Death Valley, and he wanted to find it. There's also rumors that he had some involvement in, quote, hybrid propulsion. And Tom Mahood even states, he's like, yeah, I have no fucking clue what that means. But supposedly he said he had some involvement with it. Mm. But uh, this military facility was the thing we mentioned earlier, like the China Lake thing. Because oh, okay. there is some sort of military outpost in yeah. the area. China Lake? Yeah. What's that again? Part of that rescue team was part of it, but it's like China Lake. I forget the name of it. We mentioned it a little bit later, but it's a military area that's great, around here. Great egg rolls. Oh, China Lake Naval Weapons Center. Okay, because in Modern Warfare 2... There's this piece of shit rocket launcher, grenade launcher called the China Lake. It's like a joke weapon almost. Oh, <laughs> oh man. So that's theory 2A. 2B is that Egbert wanted to travel toward Area 51, which isn't anywhere near here. But maybe he was confused about its location since there is the China Lake Naval Weapons Center that was nearby. And possibly he heard of that thinking it was Area 51. Plus, he's from Germany, and this is like his yeah. first time in the area. Yeah. So maybe he was confused and was trying to head there. Mm, That's kind of reaching. And then theory three is that the German party had come across some sort of criminal activity, like maybe the drug manufacturers that the helicopters were initially out searching for. 
also Barker Ranch, which was the Manson family ranch, was oh, actually shit. in the area. Damn. So maybe they ran into some drug dealers or murderers or other criminals, hmm. and maybe the Germans were killed, and then their van was just dumped away in Anvil Canyon. This, I mean, this isn't exactly around the time of the, the Manson family, like, no. with, because there wasn't anything else going on. Yeah, but there's, yeah. who knows if there's any weird followers or I like guess there could have been people yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, this is probably unlikely because in the van, the bank cards that belonged to Egbert, they were still in there. And although Cornelia's wallet was missing, her cards and account never had any activity recorded after the disappearance. Gotcha. And then theory four is alien assholes. Oh, Andrew was going to say that anyway. If alien assholes isn't always a theory involving any, and I mean any disappearance <laughs> your theories are all <laughs> wrong <laughs> so those were the four main accepted theories that were online up until this point yeah but tom he's like i don't like any of those theories so fuck that i'm just gonna go out there alone and find this shit out damn i have a huge <laughs> fucking huge oh ironclad <laughs> theory oh about where these German motherfuckers went. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, nobody still has any idea what happened <laughs> to the almighty <laughs> Rico fucking Harris. <laughs> Damn it. All right. My other ironclad theory <laughs> that was I didn't change it to Crispin Waddle. <laughs> it's always been him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he's. He was going through that wormhole. He made it to the Herbert, what, Herbert Fuller? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he made it there. <laughs> so then when he fell off trying to catch the axe on the Herbert Fuller, he went into another time warp. <laughs> it hit, smashed like into the fucking sand. <laughs> sand. <laughs> and, uh,. <laughs> He, was, he saw all three of their tires like fly. You know, he's just trying to be a nice guy because he can lift that fucking van all the way yeah, up. Easily. Yeah. He just lifts it up. He's like, all right, I'll help you. I'll push it. So, he, you know, he pushes it for a while while they're all sitting there and sleeping. He's just pretty much the mule pushing them all over the place. <laughs> and fucking they get to a spot. They don't. Re- they're sleeping. They don't realize they're moving. <laughs> so <laughs> they're all sleeping through this. He's just so, saving these people. He, he gets about halfway through the desert. They wake up in the middle of the day and they fucking see because it's still kind of like, OK, it's not middle of the day. It was like early dawn. But they open the door and they see this giant man coming out of the back. They're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> they like jump out and run through the desert and they get they get sucked in the ground. By none other than the fucking graboids from Tremors. <laughs> and then I don't know what happens to Rico after that, but I know that's what happened to them. I'm sure we'll find out in another episode what happens to Rico, man. Yeah, you got to keep us updated on your tracking of Rico Harris. Yeah, You're going to solve this case, bud. It's, dude, I'm just waiting for him to get to like the 21st century. He's still stuck in the, the 20th century, yeah. but he's getting there. That's what Andrew's been doing. He's just been researching Rico Harris. I mean, he's been figuring out a lot of shit. Hell yeah. Dude, this Tom Hood guy sounds kind of crazy, honestly. <sighs> he's. I think he has like a crazy like half-brother, too, who does like a, he was like in a band, but then he does a bunch of weird conspiracy theories. Oh, Jesus. Is it Tom DeLong? <laughs> <laughs> so, they're related because of first names? <laughs> <laughs> well, their middle name's Duh. That's dude from... Was that... <laughs> Was that the dude from Link? Yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, hmm. So now Tom is like, fuck it. I'm going to go there alone and find this shit out. So that's what he did. He put together a plan, and he was intending on hiking into Anvil Canyon during the day. And by night, he would wear a headlamp while continuing his hike. Sad note, though, he was going to take an off-road truck, which kind of bothers me. Like, I wish he would have also taken a piece of oh, shit boy, minivan yes. just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a question about Anvil Valley. I'm thinking it got its name because is that where like they found all the remnants from that coyote? Oh, <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ, dude! Yeah. Where he was the trying fucking... to where he was trying to catch that roadrunner. Yeah. An acme yeah, joke, it, acme <laughs> joke. <laughs> Holy shit, man! Oh, explaining Ooh. it, dude. Maybe Fuck. that was those were his butt prints. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! He drinks butt ice. <laughs> <laughs> If I was a piece of shit who could never catch a rotor and I'd be drinking butt ice to wash away my sorrows too. <laughs> holy shit, dude. Come on. Such a burn on yeah. Luke. Uh, <laughs> it's like all he uh, drinks. 
And Tom said the reason he wanted to go alone was so that he would be seeing everything for the first time, just as somebody who had never seen it before, much like the Germans would. And he would follow the trail and path that, that the van had taken. He went in October, though, so that the temperatures weren't too bad. So it's going to be, I think he said, like 60s and so mm. 60s and 70s, which is way better than 120. Oh, absolutely. And he used coordinates and found the location where the van was and even found where the butt ice and the sand ass spot was, too. Damn. So he found those exact spots. He took pictures of them mm. and all those are on the site. Mm. And everywhere he hiked, he saw tracks that looked like human boot prints, but they were actually burrow tracks. And it's possible that maybe the Germans had maybe seen these types of tracks as well and followed them thinking that they were humans. Absolutely. Wait, burrow tracks? Yeah, they're like donkeys. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And he ended up hiking like 12 miles. He did a big loop and then headed back home. But that's insane. Like 12 oh, yeah. miles out in this place where like no one goes. No one does this shit. Like no one goes out here. It's so dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And he looked at pictures and maps, and he was trying to come up with a theory on where they went and why. Mm. And this was the theory that he ends up coming up with. And he admits that, obviously, the Germans, they made a lot of mistakes, but some of them were just honest, small mistakes. So here we go. Before going into it, there are a few big picture parameters to remember that he says. One is their van was due back at the rental place on July 26th, and they had tickets to fly back to Germany on the 27th. So that means that they originally, yes, had planned to leave and head back home sometime since they had to be on the flight on the 27th. Mm. And also the Germans, they're broke as shit most likely. They tried to wire money over and tried to borrow some from his ex-wife. Yeah. So they have no money. They did have butt ice though at least. Mm. And after arriving at the visitor center on July 22nd, they may have been looking for a route to see some cool shit in Death Valley with the end goal of visiting Yosemite. This would maybe explain why they took the direction they did, heading down the west side road, which would then direct them to not visiting some of the major attractions at Death Valley. So it's like they're going to take this path down the west road, head down south, and it's going to lead them towards Yosemite. However, they're missing a lot of the major attractions in Death Valley. Yeah. And with low funds, the party didn't stay anywhere in a hotel on the night of the 22nd. And all the maps they got from the center were trails that would lead them to the west via Butt Valley and Mangle Pass. Onward past the Barker Ranch, which was the Manson family ranch. Then north to the ghost town of Ballarat and then on to Yosemite. So that's what he believed their actual destination was going to be. Absolutely. This possibly could have been the intended vacation path that the Germans were attempting to go on. But unfortunately, the Germans, they had never been out here before or in the desert, and they had no idea what to really expect. So they just really overlooked a lot of shit. Like, they really thought, like, they could just take a minivan out there, go off-road, and get to where they wanted to go. Like, they just really didn't think a lot of shit through. And on the 23rd of July, the party continued their journey... They stopped at the Warm Spring Camp, which is where they signed the log book with the note, we're going over the pass. So maybe they wrote that in the log book in case something happened to them, like possibly they were being precautious. And after a few hours of dangerous and treacherous travel, their van's tires would soon be flat and the van was now stuck. And this was most likely around the late afternoon of July 23rd. Fuck that, that would suck so bad. Yeah, they're like miles and miles out in the middle yeah. of the fucking desert, like in canyons and shit. That would suck so fucking bad. With the bad. name Death Valley. Yeah. Like, at that point, you just know you're fucked. Like, I know that feeling. One time, I thought my mom left me at Kmart, <laughs> so. <laughs> I thought she left you at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Joe Dirt. Hell, oh, fuck Jesus yeah. Christ, dude. I didn't even get fuck that ever. Yeah. Hey, keep that skull, baby. And it was during this time, most likely Egbert, that would leave the van and travel 1.7 miles east down Anvil Canyon in 109 to 120 degrees Fuck while drinking dude. a Bud Ice Fucking and then sit down in the sand. Jesus. And this is where the bottle would later be found. And it is believed that Egbert was able to see something off in the distance. And with the maps available to him at the time, he believed he saw what was the northern boundary of the China Lake Naval Weapons Center 
And the distance to him didn't look like it was all that far because he's like looking out like in the mm-hmm. desert. So he might be on top of a canyon or something. Yeah. yeah. When in reality, it was actually around nine miles away from this spot, Jesus Christ. which was also 1.7 miles away from the van in the other direction. So he sees this mm. and he sees that there's like this. I, I don't know if it's a fence or what or if he sees like towers, but he sees yeah. something and it's part of the China Lake Naval Weapons Center. Yeah. But it's so far away. And he's thinking, well, maybe I can. We can get there. There'll be patrol or something. And they're not necessarily looking to go back and get rescued yet. They're like, okay, we still got like four or five days to yeah. get to Yosemite. Like they're not thinking this is like that serious death. yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So did he? Uh, did he write a song about how far away it was? Hmm. Jesus Christ! It's so stupid. I'm just staying so far away. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke that somehow correlates to that. Sorry, that was pretty good. I, I was trying to think of a joke that involved Egbert walking back to the van singing, I, I feel so alive. And I was trying to think of a rhyme to add in about him drinking Bud Ice, but I got nothing. <laughs> too bad he couldn't sing that a couple days later. Oh, oh too. <laughs> Egbert then headed back to the van where the group would spend the rest of the night in, and this theory is believed because of the food wrappers and the shitting holes that were outside near the van. Oh, fuck, yeah. And plus there was no record of them staying anywhere else. So he's pretty much guessing that they stayed in this van overnight. Are one of the last words that were spoken in the van from his son? It was like, thanks, Dad, this is so much better than fucking staying half a week at Mom's. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, I'm so glad I turned down Legoland for this. (laughs) Legoland! (laughs) Uh. <laughs> and to make it even worse, never mind. There's gonna be a joke about that when Egbert got back. He's like, "So I didn't find any help, but I did get this DVD of Biodome." <laughs> <laughs> and that's just come out. That's uh, when everybody else in the the van killed themselves. <laughs> oh Wait a minute, God. mass suicide <laughs> due to DVD of Biodome. They didn't even have a DVD player either. So they were just like, I don't <laughs> want it. it in here. Yeah. I don't want that yeah. in here, Dad. Same thing, same thing happened at Jonestown. <laughs> they just fucking <laughs> frisbeed it till they all... Wait, Biodome came out in 96, right? Uh, I have no idea, dude. I, 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 I think I just so. Know that. Whenever the devil shit that out. Uh, anyway, what if they watch Biodome and that's where he was trying to find it? Oh. Because it is in the desert geez. somewhere, right? Yeah. Damn, well, dude, that is true. Maybe yeah. they do find it. Let's keep reading. Damn. Okay. And then the morning comes. Then the morning comes. Oh, fuck yeah. And the group, they decide to hike to the south toward the China Lake Weapons Center with the belief that maybe there would be patrols or somebody around that would help them out. But one thing that doesn't make sense is that the stone cabin where they took that flag from, that was four miles behind them, and it had food and a water supply near. So they could have gone there, but then again, they didn't know for sure how far this place was they were heading, mm. and it doesn't sound like they thought they were in like life and death situation. So if the German party would have been super worried, I imagine they probably would have head back to Stone Cabin, which is four miles behind them, unless it would have been way too hard for them to get there. Mm. But it doesn't seem like they were all that worried since they just continued on their, on their path to go to the south. Yeah. But regardless, it's July in the desert. They have to hike nine miles, 120 degrees, and they have a four-year-old with them Jesus, and man. an 11-year-old. So fuck that. That's impossible. I mean, the 11-year-old, maybe, but the four-year-old, those four-year-olds are just fucking worthless at everything. Oh, yeah. Like, they can't do shit. They yeah. can walk like 30 feet, and then yeah. they're done. Yeah, so. then you're carrying that fucker. So this is Tom's main theory of what could have happened. He believed that the party had gone south. And so he emailed a bunch of people the theory and tried to get someone to go with him. And on November 11th, 2009, he and his friend Les had gone back out there to search. And now his friend Les is fucking awesome because it's like Tom emailed a bunch of people. Like he has a bunch of search and rescue friends and shit like that. He's like, hey, I need someone to go out with me. Let's go fucking solve this. I have a theory. I think I may know where they're at. Everyone's like, no, dude, we're not going. That's too dangerous. Les isn't even into any of this shit. He's just a friend. He's like, sure, I'll go. Yeah. And so he's got to know how dangerous that is. But that's hashtag wild man. Super sad story. Les died out there. And then afterwards he was friendless. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> not even funny. Les does not fucking die dude don't spread those <laughs> yeah, lies yeah. my favorite thing about him is his business slogan less is more <laughs> <laughs> oh. fuck yeah dude that better be a slogan if it's not it is now I hope that when Tom got out of his truck um, like he did a fake voice for himself he's like hey who'd you who'd you bring with you then he cracks that joke and <laughs> opens the door and lets less out of the truck <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's November 11th, 2009 now. Tom and Les, they get out there and they make their way on the search. They also had satellite trackers on them just in case something happened or if they went missing or got injured. So him and Les, they're out on the trails searching the area that he theorized that they had gone down. They make camp out there. They gather water and then head out some more in the morning. Mm. And that's what's really hard is like you can bring a bunch of water, but you can only take what you can carry. And then they have to find a place to get more. So there's like springs, but there's almost nothing in the springs. It's hard to find too. No. So this would be easier to follow if you saw the picture of what the area looks like. But the path after the van, it splits up into three paths going south. So there's like three separate canyons that go south. And then there's a big opening area. And then there's three more canyons to the south. Hmm. And so they start making their way south. And then they split up. So like they each take on their own canyon. So some canyons were good and some canyons were better. I already know where it's going, dude. Do you want to finish it then? Um, nothing better than Canyon somehow. Who better the, than Canyon? Who better than Canyon? There we go. Okay. Dude, didn't he kill himself? I think so. Canyon? Because yeah. he right. was gay. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He was gay and he killed himself. Yeah. So what are we going to do about ourselves? I, I, I haven't decided yet. Well, we don't have <laughs> shitty wrestling Canyon, gimmicks. <laughs> so. <laughs> Rest in peace, Canyon. I did enjoy watching him wrestle. Although he looked like... I don't know, half his face I never mean, worked. Kev, we, we did like you know make a vow never to lie to our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> listeners, I lied. <laughs> Dude, did you ever see... Okay, we all know the wrestler Glacier. Yeah. Did you see the very first time he came out in costume? Was it, it's 100% Mortal Kombat 2 sub, Sub-Zero. Yeah, it was, it was Sub-Zero. Yeah, dude. Like, I always knew he was like a rip off of it, but mm. it looked exactly like a 100% yeah, yeah. Sub-Zero. Like okay. almost as much as yours did that time in Halloween. <laughs> yeah, right? We just oh, put the yeah, fucking the jeans. jeans. Yeah, yeah. That was a good costume. It was the dude. shit, dude. Oh, I think when you were talking about rip off, I think like when Kevin ripped off Taka Michinoku's entire style. <laughs> dude, didn't we crack a Taka Michinoku we, dude, joke we recently? Yeah, like a couple a couple episodes ago. Yeah. So that's like the only time he's been mentioned in the last like you know what ever. <laughs> 50? Yeah. Plus yeah. So alrighty, Tom and Les they split up. They each go down their own canyon path. They have a couple walkie-talkies on them. And then Les, he calls over on the walkie-talkie. He's like, hey, I found a wine bottle, which is weird because it's way the fuck out here in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And then a little bit later, he calls over the walkie again. He's like, I found what looks like toilet paper. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. But it's actually a paper from a daily planner. Oh, it has writing on it as well. In German. Oh, shit. So this is fucking ridiculous and insane. Like, that can't mm. just be a coincidence, you know? Yeah. How? How does he go from toilet paper to a fucking planner? I don't know, because he sees paper balled up somewhere. I don't know. That's fucking... He's a fuck. He fu- this is like, 15, like is 13 this, years wait, later. Is this less or Tom? This was less. I guess I can allow it. Less is more, like Andrew said, man. Yeah. Yeah. But that's so ridiculous. There's no one in this area, and he finds a clue. That's insane. Don't Especially like- when there's a search team of 46 people. Yeah, this area, they didn't search... As much. They did fly helicopters over this area, but they didn't search on foot to the south here this mm-hmm. far. The only reason Les is so good at finding clues, like he actually used to be like a burglar. <laughs> he had his own like uh like the sticky bandits had where they would uh you know, like leave the the wet bandits where they'd leave the water on and stuff. Yeah. Like what Les used to do, like he'd just leave a note, but nobody understood it because they didn't know it was him. But the note just said you now have less. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you bitch. That's a fucking dude. burglar. Primo, that shit. was a bitch move, dude. <laughs> oh, that shit. was a bitch move, man. I loved it. Uh, stealing uh, shit, uh, you now have less. <laughs> so as they continued on and searched more, they saw what they thought was maybe some bones, but it's out in the desert and they're not experts, so they are not quite sure what kind of bones they were. And then nearby, they find a wallet with bank cards, a passport, and some IDs, Jesus. and they all said Cornelia on it. Is this all like confirmed and shit? Yeah, this Damn. is all. This is fucking nuts. Jesus Just this Christ. guy who was interested yeah. in the case is like, so "Fuck it, fuck, I'm gonna do like, it on my own." The search teams couldn't have done this. They found some other belongings as well. They all pointed toward being Cornelia's. So there was no sign of where Egbert or the two kids had been. Damn. Also, there was another Bud Ice bottle found. Hashtag Fuck wild yes, man. Yes, dude. That's so wild, man. 
Some of them think maybe they filled it up with water. Probably. Most likely, but bullshit. I don't even... I refuse yeah. to believe that shit. Filled it with piss? <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. That's just how they filled the ices anyway. They, they found... <laughs> dude, Luke is going to kill you, dude. <laughs> you guys remember that karate video where it's just people that all fuck up real bad like the nunchuck guys in it and they get hurt and shit and he's like hey you want to see something cool and then he fucking gets hurt but there's one <laughs> of this guy he's like you wanted me to show you tough i'll show you tough and then he just fucks up real bad doesn't oh, do anything cool yes, for some reason i picture egbert is that like he's like <laughs> gathering materials like Cornelia's like, Egbert, you're you'll never be a man. You'll never be tough. And yeah. he grabs like three butt ices. He's like, You wanted me to show you tough? I'll show you tough. Then he died like three <laughs> days when later. I died, yeah. Will you when Bare this asked. is over, will you show us that video? Yeah. Okay. I know you've seen it. There's a Tosh Point oh, redemption of uh, Yeah, I'll show you, man. Okay. Yeah, like one it. guy sets a, an apple on top of this like mannequin's head and he does like a flying roundhouse and barely makes it waist level. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, so, for real, though, the spot where the shit was found, it was eight to nine miles away from the van, and Cornelia and possibly the others all would have had to have hiked there in tennis shoes in 120-degree weather in rough terrain. So that's yeah, just dude. insane that they even made it this far. Yeah. And there would then be a new extensive search of the area where the bones were found. And this search would be on March 8th, 2010. I have no idea why it was postponed so far. Mm. And they ended up finding what they believed was another set of bones. Jeez. But unfortunately, the bones had been deteriorated by weather so much that no viable DNA could be recovered. But based on the evidence and forensically, the remains were said to include bones of an adult male and also an adult female. But there was no evidence of any remains that had belonged to any children. Yeah, they fucking ate them like KFC. <laughs> so this guy I know he mentioned it but it's just insane yeah, where he's like badass. okay I don't like how this sounds something's not right so he goes and hikes his place like by himself and he almost fucking died while doing it like Jesus. he he had a thyroid problem that he didn't know about that Damn. like while he was hiking he was like okay something's not feeling right mm. and he like almost fucking died out there Jesus but yeah, that's pretty much the end of this case. Um, if it wasn't for this one guy, Tom Mahood, they never would have found the remains of Egbert or Cornelia. Um, no idea where the children are or where they died, if they did die, which I'm guessing they did. I would imagine. I yeah. think they said they might have found a piece of, like a bone that might have been a clavicle to, a, to one of the children. But it's like the weather out here is destroying shit, animals, anything. And plus, it was like 15. In 2008 or 2009, that was like 12 years yes, ago from been, that time. Yeah, so. it's been a while. But yeah, Tom, he's a fucking hashtag wild man and for a badass. Sure, dude. Yeah, hashtag wild man for sure. Check Probably. out his uh, his website and his blog. He's got he's got pictures to go along with the story. Plus, he's a, a great writer. It was a uh, it was a good read. It was a really good case. Yeah. So, what about Les's website? Where he plays uh, bass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Les Paul. <laughs> oh, oh, duh. Uh, no, you're talking Les about Paul. Les Claypool. Clay Paul, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking Les Paul, too. Jerry was a race driver, and he drove so goddamn fast. <laughs> <laughs> Took that fucking van and crashed it to the canyon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to add it in, but that Tracy Chapman song, Fast Car, I wanted mm -hmm. to make a parody of that where it's something about, like, you got a fast van. Hmm. I got a plan to get us out of here. We stopped at the convenience store, and I managed to save just a little bit of money when I purchased that butt ice. <laughs> but I got nowhere to fucking go with it. Dude, that was good enough. Nowhere to go with that it. That was good enough. Um, but yeah, so you guys have any comments or anything you want to add about the case? It's a crazy one. Um, How far did they make it to the from the van where the notes and stuff were found? Uh, to the to the actual base they were trying to get to yeah i forget exactly i think it was still a couple miles away but uh -huh. it's like the outside of the that base so i don't think there was any people or anyone near anyways but yeah, from where the van broke down matter. there was a road like two miles away mm -hmm. that they could have gone to if they wanted help Oh, where the road where they probably fucking came from. <laughs> but the thing is, is like I don't think they saw it as life or death. I really don't understand. I don't know why they would have chosen to go there instead. Yeah, they it, didn't see it as life or death. Did they know which valley they were in? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like uh, uh, you, you would think they would have, but they, I guess because they weren't from around here. But what is it's this? It's a fucking desert. 
And I guess uh, Perry Saturn actually named his finisher after Egbert, the Death Valley <laughs> van driver. <laughs> It took that whole time to come up with the Saturn joke, and it still fucking sucked, so I'm sorry. I liked it. How big of a fucking fool was this Egbert guy? Because what does he think is going to happen when he gets to this Chinese lake place? Like They're just going to like, oh, who are you? He's just like, oh, yeah, I was the scientist here. Oh, come on in. Now, you and your entire family, you guys are welcome. Yeah. Like If it was like a weapons training thing, they're not just going to let him in. Yeah, I don't know if he thought maybe they would take him back on like a military vehicle, fix the van, or I have no idea. I have no clue. Hmm. I just feel that they're really, really milking the fact that it was hot. It's 120 degrees. Isn't that hot? Honestly, just fucking put a bunch of like, just have a glass of milk. <laughs> well, every time you get a sword, just pour the milk on. I mean, the McPoyle brothers do it. <laughs> and they true. never get injuries. That's true. Fuck. Andrew's Start got busting it. bricks. Wetness. <laughs> wetness. <laughs> so I do have a, something I want to talk about before Spence gets in our clothes and shit. And uh, this is in regards to the podcast, and we wanted to hear some feedback from you guys. We are thinking about starting a Patreon since we're about a year, or we're just hitting a year. This is episode 51, so... Oh, shit, I thought you were talking about the last time I got laid. I was going to say, like, <laughs> at no. nine Hey, was that the Halloween party I had that only uh, you showed up to when you when you got laid that <laughs> night? <laughs> well, hey, I, I was there as the sailor hey, We had that whole bowl of <laughs> chips, man. Yeah, I was the slutty pumpkin. Yeah. Oh, fuck <laughs> yes. Just spent 10 years looking <laughs> for it. So, yeah, we, were, uh, we wanted to set up a Patreon. And because we had a couple people ask about it, but we wanted to know what would be some incentives that would get you guys and ladies to want to uh, sign up for it. Hmm. Like we thought about having our Patreon subscribers. What's the word I'm looking for? I have a question. Donators. Patrons. Patrons. Um, like maybe you guys could pick topics. Like we'll give a list of topics and let our patrons choose which ones they want to hear. Yeah. Um, also, we would give out some stickers. I was going to get some more made. I mean, I sent out Ooh, stickers for stickers. free. <laughs> I sent out stickers for free anyways, but I was going to print out maybe two or three different ones. So if yeah. you're a patron, we'll send those to you. Absolutely. And I mean, don't just send us like requests. Like, you have to send it in your panties. So you just write it down in panties. <laughs> and we'll send the panties right back. But yeah. whatever color they are, you're getting them back all white because we oh, fucking yeah. sniff the colors oh, out yeah, of them. We, hey, we probably shouldn't do the panties thing or else my mom probably wants us to reenact Carrie all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but for some of our listeners and also me who kind of don't know describe what a patreon is though what patreon is is it's like a monthly thing like you would donate a monthly subscription or fee to the podcast loot like, box no what he fucking what but it'd be like one dollar a month two dollars five dollars ten dollars like they can pay so much a month and then they would get access to bonus content from us like depending on what their levels are so Wait. it's like if it's one dollar a month, we would send them stickers. Yeah. Um, if it's five dollars a month, they would get bonus episodes because we wanted to record some bonus episodes that only our patrons would get. Also, dude, could people legit like request like an unedited version? I was about like, to ask that. No, yeah. that's not gonna happen. Damn, but say because Tooth would have some fucking stuff in there. That's not gonna happen yeah. at the two hundred dollars a month level. You get unedited saying, episodes. Tooth would have some fucking stuff in there. <laughs> But and also we are gonna release a bonus episode sometime soon to give you an idea what the Patreon bonus episodes would be like. Absolutely. But yeah, we want to hear from you guys what would be something that would you would like that we could get you to sign up for it. We we definitely gotta research it because it is new to us, so we'll have to check that out. But did you guys have any ideas for stuff? No. That they could get besides like stickers, uh, bonus episodes. I was thinking maybe. Uh, Tooth makes a lot of super funny Snapchats. He does. We could post that on our Patreon for like the one dollar things. Like they get some of those funny Tooth videos because you got a lot of funny mm. shit, dude. Yeah. What if they do a bunch of stuff? We record skits. Well, Ooh, I, I was cool. thinking, yeah, that could be bonus videos too. I yeah. was thinking for like whatever one of the highest ones is, they could give us their name or maybe like a little bit of something, and we could make a song. Oh, okay. oh, cool. Like an acoustic song. Mm. I don't know. We're just kind of spitballing a bunch of ideas right oh, now. Okay, yeah. Since we're spitballing ideas, how about we... Uh, it's like that thing from Major League where they had the picture of that owner chick and they keep taking like her clothing yes. off and everything. Oh, yeah. yes. And it's like a picture of all of us naked. And the more requests we get in five-star reviews, we keep taking the sticker off. Oh, my God. I love that. And also, once we do have a Patreon started, since I think one of the benefits of it will be shout-outs... We might move, like, we'll still keep Honorary Brother of the Week based on iTunes reviews, but we might move that to the very end of the episode. So at the very end of the episode, maybe we'll, 
announce our honorary brother and then give the Patreon shout outs. Oh, okay. So it's not at the very beginning because even though I really like doing it, some people just want to listen to the case right away. They don't want to hear us like bullshit and talk about stuff for like 10 minutes. Okay. But that's what our bonus episodes are going to be, like comedy shit where we talk about stuff. So. <laughs> they definitely don't want the fucking unedited <laughs> ones. Hey, if you fuckers don't like it, suck it up or fuck off, guys. <laughs> So well, they were trying to suck it up. That's why they were spitballing. Oh. So, all righty. Uh, anything before Spencer's are closing shit? No, dare it. Good and gracious brother folk. Thank you for listening to yet another of our episodes. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can follow us on social media. On Facebook and Twitter, just search for the Brothers Commonplace Podcast. You can contact us on either of those platforms or with the email address brotherscommonplace at gmail.com and uh, send us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Uh, drop us a little note. We love it when we hear from you guys. And uh, especially be sure to leave the podcast a review or a rating on whatever app you use to get podcasts, especially iTunes. And uh, if you do that, send take a screenshot and send it to us and you may become the next honorary brother of the week. And special thank you to everyone that has left us an iTunes review. That means the absolute world to us. Keep them coming. We have 71 reviews now. That's Damn. fucking insane. We Fuck had like yeah. 50 for the longest time. Oh, yeah, dude. So nice. thank you, everyone, that's been leaving those. And each week we'll pick an honorary brother, on, and we're going to go through the five-star reviews and pick them. So if you want to shout out and you want to be an honorary brother, keep those coming. Absolutely. And we had a, an awesome episode 50 release. We had the most downloads we've ever had in a day. So thank you guys for making that happen. Fuck yeah. Uh, God, you guys have been super awesome. So, uh, yeah, just thank you very much. So, yeah, I usually request for you guys to, you know, I don't know, send us a review and, and, and ask us to do something crazy. But I think that kind of goes along with the, the Patreon thing there. So, I don't know, like like Kevin said, give us some ideas. Um, like, you know, we're going to do a, a quick episode to, to send out so you guys know what it's all like. But, you know, give us some ideas. Give us a movie to review or something, you know, something bonus to put out that you guys would like to see. Um, you know, I definitely think it could be fun. You guys could like it. And, uh. Just do it, you fucking assholes. <laughs> when Andrew sat up to go pee, from all his, like, farts that he farted, like, the stain on the ground, I could smell pure ass when he got up. Dude, holy shit. Point it out. I don't want to fucking smell it. Me and Andrew have this tradition where we, uh, we, like, hang out every now and then when we can, and, uh, we, like, set up, like, a blanket fort and watch porn together. We had this idea to get a Sharpie and draw little faces on our dicks while we were watching this hooker porn. And we like we just named nicknamed it Shorties watching Shorties. Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. That shows the shit. Oh fuck yeah! I got some words of wisdom. Hmm. Me and Andrew, uh, besides the uh, the uh, shorties, shorties watching Shorties. Yeah, before the Shorties watching Shorties, me and Andrew used to play this like cool game. Like it's fun, like learn other things, like sign language and stuff. Like yeah. thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'd start losing learning Braille, you know, because like. We fucking might be blind sometimes. <laughs> sometimes so, uh, like not all of them. So me and Andrew sometimes like to like send each other little messages. So we'll shave our balls so we have like little shaving bumps on them and stuff. And one time I shaved out my balls. I love you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> he felt it. He loved it. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Uh, awesome. Oh, fuck. All right. I'm going to try this one out. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> me and andrew uh join this porn site where they like to do like imposter porns and stuff like you know the like star wars xxx parodies yeah. and, like walking dead xxx parodies mm. you want to join in on that one kev you got a thing from that from the walking dead xxx oh one? my god yes oh, um, come on carl <laughs> hey carl you ready carl for what we have to do to sophia <laughs> <laughs> and and in the Walking Dead porn parody, in order to kill Sophia, they had to blow a load in her mouth. <laughs> that was the only way. That's the best, man. So where there's a section on that site where they do all those parodies, where they do a bunch of parodies of uh, uh, Jim Carrey movies. Wait, Andrew, what kind of movies? Jim who? The ultimate evil Jim. Dun, dun, dun. Scary. Oh, fuck <laughs> yes. <laughs> But uh, we did this one where we uh, we like went to the fairs and you know those lemonades that they sell you at the fairs. Well, we go there and we stick our dicks in them and <laughs> we drink out of them. It's called Lemony Stick It series of unfortunate events. <laughs> so we uh, 
we sent that in to the website with a couple of our podcast stickers, and I think they said they subbed to us. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, that was worth the wait. Hey, the juice was worth the squeeze That's on right. that one, yeah. too. Uh, you yeah. know, I've got like two left, and I'm just going to say them because I don't want to add on to them, and they're not going to be cool. But... <laughs> Fuck, I, I'll make something out of this shit. So, like, me and Andrew <laughs> like to put, like, you know, like, uh, an old homophobic slur was, like, they put moles or mice in their anus or something like that. Yeah. Oh, it was the, like, the Richard Gear. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Richard really? Gear I just know from, like, South Park, like, yeah. uh, Mr. Hand, I think his name was, like, oh, no. It was Mr. Slave. Yeah, Mr. Slave yeah, put, yeah. like, the gerbil in his ass. Gerbils, yeah. that's it. Put yeah. gerbils in his ass. There's, like, an old, like, urban legend that Richard Gear did it. Was it with a gerbil? Yeah. yeah. Well, gerbils are fucking expensive, so me and Andrew used rats, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we we uploaded X videos, and we just named the video Stuart Diddle. I don't know if you've seen these like nasty porns, oh, but like shit. some girls like stick a cigarette in their pussy, and, like try and like inhale it and stuff, and like oh, puff man. out. It's fucking disgusting. Uh, yeah. Like, worse than scat porn, worse than anything. Like, I think that's just fucking nasty, I've never man. fully gotten through any what, scat uh, porn. They're so. smoking a cigarette through their puss? I'll fucking look it up, dude. It's Holy so shit, I didn't know they could do They can inhale yeah, that way? It's fucking nasty. Like, they huh. can fucking queef, dude. They can do anything. Well, I, okay. Wait, can uh, they queef? Yeah, well, they can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but me and Andrew would do that, but since we don't, obviously don't have vaginas, yeah. well... <laughs> One of you don't. Well, maybe if you uh, if you donate money to our Patreon, you might find out what oh, us does. Yes, dude. If you donate a hundred dollars to our Patreon, I will get a surgery to get a vagina attached to me somewhere of your choosing. Oh <laughs> shit! They put up my forehead and call me a Klingon. <laughs> uh, you are like the best guy who like a plane's going down and you're not a pilot at all you have no fucking idea what you're doing but right before it's about to crash you become like the ultimate savior pilot somehow those are like how your jokes go dude it's like okay this has nowhere to go Stuart diddle that is the best fucking joke i've ever heard so like the vagina smoking thing well me and andrew just put like the cigarettes in our asses and it was like this nasty like goth porn website or something like that yeah. and it's, we named it cigarette butts <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah. isn't it overseas isn't cigarette it butts. that video just called fags because <laughs> 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 oh, oh that's the name of it over there yeah, that's oh, yeah. what these call the name cigarettes. Of what cigarettes are called right. over there yeah, that's not <laughs> anything was, bad wasn't a slur he did not cross a the line there yeah. Me and Andrew are French. <laughs> so, all righty. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Be good. Stay safe. And laugh the dark stuff. Hashtag wild man. Oh. Hashtag wild man. Hashtag green bean casserole. Oh. Hashtag desert. Hashtag northern lights. Oh, fuck. Hashtag wild woman. Hashtag wild dog. Hashtag South Park rally Germans. Oh. Hashtag. What if <laughs> hashtag butt ice. Oh, oh boy. hashtag butt ice. Oh. Hashtag. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, I thought about this at work for some reason, but I think it'd be, um, it's like a glory hole, mm. but it's a restaurant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so oh, it's like, man. so and like you're, you sit down in, you sit down in like your little booth, you order your food and like probably like a corn dog would be my guess. <laughs> And then you sit down, and then they put corn dogs through the hole, and they just like corn feed dogs, you. bratwurst, hot yeah. dogs, foot so they're hot like dogs. they're like dick, they're dick shaped foods, but it's called it's called hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the restaurant, oh, oh, and they just feed you through it because I think that'd be cool. You don't have to really? use your hands. That would be cool. I mean, I would do it once. Okay. You'd have to do it at least once, and maybe it's really cool. Honestly, yeah. Only girl, it could be like Hooters. Like Hooter girls that feed you, so like you're not getting fed by like weird fat uh-huh, dudes. Yeah, I got you. That's kind of cool. See them? <laughs> no, but you see their hands, and you can judge God, a girl's appearance based on this? hands. Do you get to suck on their fingers? Like, mm, let me go. No, because finger no. licking, finger licking good. Okay, here's the thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> finger licking.
fucking good. No. Okay, here's the thing. I'm, I'm warming it's up not, to this idea. It's not sexual at all. It's okay. like, it's not sexual oh, at all. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just, it looks like a, it's a glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a non-sexual glory hole. It's hole in the wall. It's, it's hole in the wall. Yeah. It's a non-sexual glory hole. They just put corn dogs through it. So, like, kids can go there. <laughs> So we have women uh, feeding kids through holes. <laughs> what are we teaching them? We're just so they don't have to use their hands to if eat. It, if it was Dude, like, honestly, if this could be for barbecue ribs, this would catch We could on. do that, too. They could put a rib through there. Yeah. Yeah. Although hole if they limited it to just corn dogs, it could be cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of corn products, <laughs> corn chowder, <laughs> corn of the cow, dude. Dude, two holes. Corn of the Wait cow. a minute. There you go. Let's figure this out. You are blindfolded. If you get to guess what the thing is, it's like but, half but off your you, bill or something like that. But you order the food. Or you can have like mystery hole. Yeah. Mystery hole. Mystery hole. There's a mystery hole. You just hole. put your lips up to the hole. <laughs> You don't know what's going on. <laughs> if you guess right, you get all the glory. <laughs> <laughs> I think this could be. I bet there's something like this in Japan. The Starlight Lounge presents an evening with the progressive box. Old moon. Yeah. That's Hugo tickling the ivories. He just saved by bundling home and auto with progressive. Gonna finally buy a ring for that gal of yours, Hugo? Send her my condolences. Hi, oh! This next one's for you, too. There's a burglar in my heart. Thank you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations. And now, an ad from Dad. <clears throat> all right. Save money on car insurance when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Can I take these off? All right. What is this? This looks good. Wow. That's well made. Where did you get this? I'm talking to you with the hair. Yeah, where did you get this? It's good stuff. That's solid. That's not veneer. That's solid stuff. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discounts not available in all states or situations.